The International Labour Organization defines the reconciliation between work and family as one of the greatest challenges of our time. Reconciliation of work and family is a fundamental aspect of promoting equality in the world of work and of reducing poverty. It is also an essential condition for making progress towards gender equality. The labour force relies on the participation of both men and women to achieve the objectives of full employment and gender equality. However, an examination of total employment rates shows that significant differences between women and men still exist. For women and men to be able to access the labour market on the same footing, there is a need for institutional policies to enable reconciliation of family and work life. In this presentation, we will learn about key reconciliation policies and examine the data sources and measurement issues specific to this matter. It is often a challenge for people to balance paid work time, family time and free time. Family responsibilities can have a particular constraint on women's participation in the labour force, since time use surveys show it is usually women who do most of the unpaid care work. For example, as the graph shows, in Netherlands, Poland and Canada, women spend twice as much time daily on childcare compared to men. With low fertility rates and ageing populations in many countries, policies that support the combination of professional and family life are becoming increasingly important. Some countries have implemented new family policies with an emphasis on parental employment rates. They can be designed with the aim of supporting women in overcoming the obstacles to full participation in the labour market in comparison to their male counterparts. These policies relate to childcare facilities, leave entitlements, flexible working arrangements and financial allowances. The extent and form of women's participation in the workforce is often linked to whether they have small children or other people requiring care in their households. For example, as the chart shows, for employment rates in Austria, France, Serbia and Hungary, the share of women in full-time employment decreases as the number of children they have increases. However, an increase in the number of children has little effect on the employment rate of male parents. As care responsibilities often constitute an obstacle to women participating in full-time employment, the provision of childcare services is very important. The graph shows the ratio of the number of places available for children aged 0 to 2 years in childcare centres per 100 children aged 0 to 2 years in selected countries of the UNEC region. The overall availability of childcare facilities for young children is low, with significant variation between countries. The impact that childcare services have on labour supply also depends on the existence of mechanisms such as leave entitlements and flexible working arrangements. Considering data on childcare facilities in isolation does not tell us much about the extent to which the demand is being met, nor does it enable us to draw conclusions as to how women balance their work and family life. For example, in Finland there is a relatively small proportion of childcare facilities for young children, but there are policies to encourage alternative ways of looking after young children, such as parental leave. Each Finnish family is entitled to 26 weeks of parental leave after maternity leave and, in addition, to paid home care leave until the youngest child is three years old or enters the public childcare system. Leave entitlements, such as maternity and parental leave, play a key role in influencing employment rates of women. The effectiveness of leave policies depends on a range of factors, such as level of payment, length of leave, and flexibility in using the leave and the labour market sector in which they are employed. Allowing women to have long periods of leave may have unintended consequences. For example, if mothers take long periods of leave while fathers assume the role of breadwinners, it might reinforce women's second earner status and reduce job progression. However, too short a period of leave does not guarantee that women will enter the labour force immediately after the leave is over, since they might find it hard to leave a very small child at home unless favourable childcare provisions are guaranteed. 
Another aspect that is often missing in leave policies is equal opportunities for women and men. If it is mainly women who take long parental leave periods, then this might strengthen stereotypical assumptions about men and women's domestic responsibilities and might fuel discrimination against the recruitment and promotion of women. Gender inequality in leave entitlements can be corrected through a range of institutional arrangements, such as adopting policies on paid paternity leave, use of parental leave on a part-time basis by both women and men, the ability to use blocks of leave rather than take leave in a continuous period, and the right to defer leave and the right to reduce working hours. Flexible working time arrangements should also be considered as part of reconciliation policies. Flexible arrangements may include the following possibilities. Part-time work, job sharing, flexibility in working hours or flexi time, and compressed working week or annualised hours. This graph shows the share of women and men in part and full-time employment for France, Germany, Italy and Spain. The percentage of women in part-time work is around 80% compared to 20% for men in the same category. Only 40% of all full-time workers are women and 60% are men. The availability of part-time work provides flexibility in balancing work and family life. However, availability of part-time work does not necessarily mean that couples are able to totally balance their family and work life as they wish. Compared to full-time workers, Part-timers may have lower status and may not be entitled to the same occupational pensions and other benefits such as access to training. If national legislation does not provide the right to request conversion of part-time employment to full-time employment, it might increase employers' bargaining power and exclude employees who are only available for part-time work from the labour market. Financial allowances are another dimension of reconciliation policies. They include family allowances and financial payments on the occasion of a child's birth. Child-related tax allowances exist in most countries, but the policies vary. In only a few cases are financial benefits targeted towards dual-income families, thus promoting equal sharing of paid work. In the Netherlands, for example, tax allowance is paid to parents if both earn a certain amount of money from activities outside their household and if their child is younger than 12 years of age. Statistical offices often find it challenging to identify methodological instruments to measure the reconciliation of work and family life. Nevertheless, there are a number of data sources which are useful. Most countries conduct regular labour force surveys. They obtain information on labour status, employment characteristics of the main job, hours worked and education, along with demographic characteristics and household composition. Data from the Labour Force Survey alone are not sufficient to formulate reconciliation policies. In order to better utilise the Labour Force Survey, an ad hoc module or reconciliation was included in the European Union Labour Force Survey of 2005. The module aimed at establishing how far persons participate in the Labour Force as they would wish and where they are unable to do so whether the reasons are connected to a lack of suitable care services for children and dependent persons, analysing the degree of flexibility offered at work in terms of reconciliation with family life, and leave provisions. The module covered childcare and other care responsibilities, use of parental leave, and the reasons for working or not working. The Survey on Income and Living Conditions, the SILC, is a survey of the European Union which is designed to complement the EU Labour Force Survey. EU SILC includes questions on employment, hours worked, types of contracts, reasons part-timers are not in full-time employment and reasons for changing a job. Recently, a module was added containing detailed data on childcare services. Time use surveys collect information on how people allocate their time among different types of activities and provide a detailed picture of people's daily lives. Time use surveys represent a useful source of information on how women and men divide their time between paid work, housework, study, personal care, family tasks and leisure activities. In showing the different patterns of time allocation associated with gender, 
Time use surveys highlight roles and conditions of women and men in family and social life. Time use surveys are often considered as a superior source to the labour force questionnaires since they allow work to be contextualised within a 24-hour framework and provide an estimation of hours actually dedicated to an activity. Data from time use surveys may enable a better understanding of the impact of unpaid work on women's participation rates. For the purposes of assessment and comparability of current reconciliation policies, it's important to adopt a common set of indicators that measure progress. It is unclear, however, which indicators are the most appropriate to evaluate national welfare policies. Even so, there is a set of indicators on which statistics are usually available. For example, since parenthood has a strong impact on women's participation rates in the labour force, it would be a good idea to measure the impact of parenthood on employment rates, an absolute difference in employment rates of men and women of the age group 20 to 49 without the presence of any children and with the presence of a child in the age category of 0 to 6. The data for this indicator are provided in the labour force surveys. Also, the following indicators may capture the progress of the reconciliation policies. Impact of marital status on the employment rates by sex. Number of available places at preschools and daycare centres. Length of leave weighted by the level of payment. Share of employees working fewer hours because of care of children or other dependents. Time spent on domestic work by sex. Time spent on free time activities by sex. There are a number of quality indicators on which statistics are not available. For example, the data usually allow us to measure only quantity of childcare services, not quality. Since quality plays an important role in making a decision on whether to take a child to the childcare services or not, it would be a good idea to have data on the quality indicators, such as educational attainment of staff or carer versus child ratio. As discussed above, the fact that paternal leave is usually not considered in the policies might result in problems for reintegration of women back into the labour market as well as reinforcement of the gender division of labour since few fathers use such leave even though it is in principle available to them. Indicators that will measure gender dimension in using their parental leave take-up by fathers and mothers represent the take-up rate by men as well as by women for which data are usually missing. Reconciliation of work and family is an important issue. Available information indicates that there is more to do. Better utilisation of existing data sources could go a long way to help policymakers better understand the problems.